Hey guys, today we are back with episode number 24 of Truck History. On this episode, we will be presenting the primarily Vancouver-based History of Pacific Trucks. But before we get started, this video was made possible by our online chrome shop, jackschromeshop.com. Be sure to stop by the site and sweep through our selection of sales, including 15% off Talladega fiberglass products, SH tube products, custom grill inserts, upholstery, and so much more. And remember folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Venturing all the way back to the beginning in Vancouver, British Columbia, the history of Pacific trucks started in the mid-40s, ironically, with three ex-Hayes truck employees, who set up their very own shop and debuted their first truck, the Model E MAD, as early as May of 1947. After launching Pacific Truck and Trailer Limited, the first Pacific-produced vehicle was built for Bowwaters Pulp and Paper in Newfoundland. Pacific quickly proved themselves in the British Columbia market as an established producer of logging trucks and trailers for many major forest companies and other independent loggers. One year later, in 1948, the company expanded into a larger facility where they would also begin building a brand new fire truck. In 1953, Pacific expanded yet again, this time including an all new sheet metal department. After such a slow start, most models maintain the same styling for several years. Square type front fenders, large single headlights mounted onto the bumper, and a smooth rounded grill right above the radiator. That was until the mid 50s, when Pacific began producing a second styling of their trucks with rounded fenders, side mounted headlights, a grill guard, and the Pacific name painted on the hood. During the latter part of the 1950s and early 60s, Pacific also produced a mere four cabover models, created specifically for snow plowing and sanding on the Hope Princeton Highway. As the 1960s continued to evolve, Pacific's trucks also evolved and adopted all new shiny chrome script lettering on the hood and radiator with rear axle model numbers. In 1963, the first state-of-the-art I-beam truck came out, complete with Williams exhaust brakes and a water spraying system that continuously kept the drum brakes cooled. Although not originally offered as a P-16 model, sometime in 1964, Pacific began producing the truck under the P-16 nameplate. These P-16s saw soaring success as demand for heavy-duty logging trucks skyrocketed, and by 1965, another Pacific P9 model was made. Unfortunately, despite their best efforts at expansion, in August of 1970, the privately owned Pacific Truck and Trailer was purchased by International Harvester. After merging with International, Pacific began manufacturing many models that included International cabs, despite overall design and production still being led by Pacific. Together, this team introduced the model P-12 truck in 1972, built specifically for South African railway usage, which was later utilized as a regular production rig as well. By 1975, Pacific was producing four mostly off-highway models, with the most popular being the P-510 truck. These P510s came customizable with either steel hoods and fenders or fiberglass hoods and fenders and were most often used for oil field operations in America and abroad. Offering oversized tires intended for desert sand conditions, P510s primarily used international Paystar cabs, although Pacific steel cabs also came as an available option. Moving into the early 80s, Pacific became a casualty of both the Canadian recession and the financial ruins suffered by International at the time. And in September of 1981, 
International Harvester sold Pacific Truck and Trailer to Inchcape Burhad, Singapore. Inchcape, who became interested in Pacific due to their involvement in the Southeast Asia forestry boom, intended to supply their vehicles to logging and mining companies in Malaysia, Indonesia, and other countries in hopes to return Pacific to a respected, reputable, profitable truck producer. However, Inchcape was forced to reformulate their strategy several times throughout the duration of the 80s, despite downsizing, outsourcing, and contract cancellations. By late 1989, Pacific's parent company from Singapore had sold their shares, and in October of 1991, the last production Pacific was built before the manufacturing plant was closed and torn down leaving only one Pacific Parts Department operating in Vancouver. By 1993, many improvements were in the works, including new management, added financial assistance, investments in advanced technology, and moving headquarters from Vancouver to Edmonton. The next year in 1994, Pacific Trucks was purchased by a company called Crane Carrier Incorporated a Tulsa-based heavy-duty truck parts distributor and vehicle manufacturer. Following this sale, in the summer of 1995, the last Pacific vehicle was produced in the back of the Vancouver Parts Warehouse. Two years later in February of 1997, the warehouse was relocated yet again to a new facility in Surrey, British Columbia, where operations continued as business carried on the wholesale distribution of truck parts for North American vehicles. Skipping ahead to 2002, Pacific's parent company, Crane Carrier Incorporated, decided to close down the Surrey location and consolidate all operations to the Edmonton office. The Pacific Trucks part portion of the business included all 55 years of original blueprints, materials, illustrations, jigs, molds, and other templates, was subsequently sold to Coast Powertrain, who has continually been a close parts customer of Pacific's for 20 plus years. Currently, Coast Powertrain has their own in-house production facility capable of building original Pacific parts from the original Pacific blueprints. In addition to their very own in-house driveline shop, authorized by Rockwell, to build any and all driveline requirements. Additionally, almost all original core suppliers, including sheet metal shops, etc., still supply the same products to Pacific trucks today as they did back then. With the help of a few ex-Pacific factory personnel and the ability to create countless customized builds, Coast Powertrain continues on to this day under the newly named and restyled Pacific Truck Manufacturing Incorporated. With the backing of Coast Powertrain, Pacific Truck Manufacturing is the sole designer, manufacturer, and supplier of Pacific Truck Propriety Parts, Pacific Sub-Assemblies, and complete Pacific Trucks worldwide. Despite their wide-ranging success seen both abroad and amongst the Canadian and U.S. markets, during their nearly 50 years of operations, Pacific only produced approximately 250 P9 models and a grand total of 2,308 trucks altogether. Although a smaller semi-truck company that is seldom seen on the streets today, many of the few remaining models are still out and operating to this day. That brings you up to date with the history of Pacific trucks. Before you leave, make sure you like the video check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 30k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and discuss all things Chrome with our host, Dave Coleman. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to buy your big rig the best chrome for your home 
with some sweet stainless sails on our website at jackschromeshop.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Mm -hmm.